Welcome to Healthy University, where we'll discuss issues and subjects on how you can live a healthier and more productive life. And now, here's your host for Healthy University, Alan Eisenberg. Hi, and welcome to Healthy U. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I tell you, I'm so excited today. I get to talk to the woman who really helped bring me into the world I wanted to be in for so long, uh, which is the world of coaching and helping other people move forward with their lives. Uh, it's Aisha Amatula. She's the director of the Universal Coach Institute, the School of Coaching. It was a choice I made. I mean, I looked at all sorts of coaching programs, and I just loved what she had to say and how she said it and realized that was that was where I wanted to be and it, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. So I'm, I'm excited she, she agreed to be on the show and we get to talk about sort of coaching and how it works with self-esteem. So Aisha founded the Universal Coaching Institute, UCI, that's produced many, many certified coaches, has over 13, 15 years experience in the coaching industry, and to earn the title of the coach's coach. And I can tell you from personal experience, she's just that for me. I mean, it's it's so great. And I think that's the beauty of coaching is we all have to be coached, even the coaches. <laughs> and she's also had a hand in producing some of the greatest names in the coaching industry. So welcome to the show, Aisha. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, Alan. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, so you know, one of the things I, I really wanted to ask you at the beginning, and I thought we'd just start talking about sort of the coaching as a, as a whole, because I think a lot of people don't understand it, and it's sort of picking up in popularity. I see a lot more people who are understanding, oh, you know, this is what coaches do. But what, what motivated you? What, when, what was, I know what motivated me, but what motivated you to get into the coaching industry? Wow, what motivated me? <laughs> That's a pretty long story. But to make it short, um, actually, I, for years, what I wanted to do, I wanted to be a marriage and family therapist. So that's where it really started. Um, but when I went to school, uh, when I was going for my degree, I was told that I should go to school for computer information systems because that was the wave of the future. And I was really good with computers. So I ended up going to school for that. I graduated with my bachelor's in computer science. Um, but I realized that that was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a magic family therapist and I didn't want to go back to school. So I decided um, that I was going to go get my master's degree in psychology, but uh, financial issues, I had some financial issues, so I couldn't do that. And so I was really depressed. And, and at that time I had actually um, met a life coach and this life coach was telling me, hey, you can still do what it is that you want to do. And you don't have to go back to school, you know, to be a psychologist in order to do it. And that's when she introduced me to life coaching. And so um, I studied up on it and I went to school. I went to another training institute to learn about coaching. And that's really how I got into the coaching industry. Mm. Uh, so. Yeah, that, that's so funny. I mean, it's I feel like you're telling my story. <laughs> you know, I went to school and I studied media communications and sociology. And, you know, I think I think when you're young, when you're young and going to school at 21, 22, I think we all have these these different stages in life. And, you know, I always like being around people, working with people. I did theater in high school and, you know, I was always sort of that kind of person. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I ended up doing video and stuff, which was fun. That was very interactive. And then, and, but that led down sort of your path to IT, uh, the internet, the internet comes out and I'm like, Oh, well, I got to get into that. Cause I'll make money. Right. And then you're sitting in a seat all day and then you start getting depressed cause you're not around anyone. You're not doing anything. <laughs> it's like, I don't like this. I want to, I want to help people. And I did the exactly. same thing. I was like, do I go back and get a master's in psychology? And since my degree's not in it, I'd have to take all these prereqs and, you know, I'm, I'm 49 now. I'm like, is that what is that, you know, would it even do it? And then I said, I started looking at coaching and I said, you know, this is really what I like doing is, is seeing people succeed, taking people to, to, to from zero to a hundred in their life. But yeah. that stuff in the back, I mean, I've been through it. I'm sure you've been through it. Everybody's been through it. I'm not sure I want to just sit there 
like a therapist and listen to people trying to deal with their past. And I'm sure you you know as well as I do, there are a lot of people who can just never get past their past. Right, and, right. And you're, they're going to a therapist for 30 years. And, and I, I know some of these people. And I'm like, really? After 30 <laughs> years, you think this therapist is going to help you? Right. And it's like, you know, so, so I like dealing with people who know that they have to help themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's really what coaching, what you helped me discover was, you know, my job is, I almost call it like cheerleading, but but functional cheerleading. Like I'm here to guide you, almost like a spirit guide, you know, kind of somewhere to where you want to be. But it's all about you. You know, I, so I was telling this woman the other day, I'm like, this is all about you. You know, I don't want to know about all the past people, all your problems. This is about you wanting to reach your goal and and doing that. And I think for a lot of people that surprises them because they always think some a lot of people get caught up in the world mm-hmm. and not realizing how much control they have over their their own self right right yeah you know, so that's what i love about coaching but then then you went a step further which was to start your own business which of course is how i discovered you how, how did you make that decision how did you make that leap like okay i want to help people and now i want to help make coaches yeah so what happened was i went to a school i mean it was a really good school um to learn coaching, but there were a lot of things missing from it that I wanted to see, uh, what the, well, there were, there were things missing in the program that I wanted for myself. Uh, but first of all, when I first started, I was coaching. And of course, you know, when you begin helping people, other people want to know how do I do what I do and can I show them and can I teach them and can I train them? So that's how that's first. That's how it started. I started off by teaching other people um, what I was doing. And I was doing this locally. I wasn't even doing this online. Um, and then I had was I was speaking with other peers, other coaches, and they were telling me about the programs that they went through. And there were certain things missing from the programs that they wished that they had. And so that's basically what I decided to do was put together a program and fill in some of the gaps of the things that were missing from these other programs. When I was training other people locally, I decided to put these extra um, courses in there to help them in other areas where these other programs weren't. And I had coaches who took other programs come to my program to get the extra things that they needed from the program. Um, One of the things that were missing was the transformation piece. Mm -hmm. From these programs, it was a lot of the the foundation and it wasn't given the transformation piece. It wasn't talking about, you know, the self-esteem and talking about the beliefs, the mindset and things like that. So um, that's how I actually decided to um, come up with the transformation program itself. Because I did a lot of studying and I actually went back to school um, for psychology. And so um, I put together the transformation program based off of that. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I tell you, I had no idea we had these parallels, you know, <laughs> because I was sort of sort of the same thing. You know, I got I got sort of, you know, when I was coming out of a, a sort of a darker period of trying to realize what did I what did I want and how did I want to get there? And I started doing all this studying and, and, you know, psychology was such a big thing to study. And, and this idea of, of motivation of, you know, people getting demotivated and, you know, how do you get them remotivated? And, right. and I was so glad to, you know, I, yeah, I, I have three coaching certifications from you, which, you know, I think the, yeah. the so, solutions focused and transformational, were, were so much more eye-opening than the life one. The life one, I kind of thought, I, you know, it's like you, you study enough and you go, I kind of know this. Right. Yeah, you know, this I kind of know. You know, when you're helping someone get their life together, well, that's, I have an, I have an empathetic personality, so I get that, you know. But, mm-hmm. but really, like, some of those special things that that you're, you're talking about that people need to understand, like, you, you can't move on until you believe in yourself to a certain extent. Right. right. So, so, you know, with that in mind, from your vantage point, what is it about coaching? And, and since you've studied, you know, enough about uh, psychology and some of the other things like me, that makes it different than say therapy or other forms of help people get. Why is, why, why would someone really um, want to get coached? 
Well, first of all, if you are ready to move on in your life, if you're ready to take action and really change who you are or uh, do something different with yourself, coaching is where you need to be. Um, I've noticed that I know like you were saying um, about being a therapist or a psychologist, like you really didn't want to sit there and have to like (laughs) deal with the, the issues, you know, dig into the past with them. Um, and with that, when therapists do that, and even sometimes I find, uh, when coaches do that, you know, it really, it doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You, you find, you get the answers, you know, maybe that you need (laughs) to move (laughs) forward. Um, but you have to actually begin to take those steps. You have to take, uh, the action steps to actually move forward and coaching really provides the tools. It provides the techniques and, uh, the help for you to actually begin to move forward in your life and not just your life and anything could be in your, you know, in your business, it could be in your career, your relationships, whatever it is, you know, coaching is one is the the best tool, I believe, uh, to help you do that. Yeah. And, and when I was, you know, the, the other thing I'm, you know, I hope you don't mind if I mention is just, you know, the, the power of the amount of, uh, extra information you had on your site, the the worksheets and the mm-hmm. the all these things that that you've done the homework on to say, okay, you know, here's here's something good for people to do. I remember, you know, I got really lucky with some of my jobs where we did, you know, both uh, we did EQs instead of IQs. You know, what's mm-hmm. your emotional quotient? And right. I love that term, emotional quotient. And then we did the one that was a preference test versus a personality test. It's like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you prefer to do things? You know, do you like to answer the phone or would you rather just type an I am? You know, mm-hmm. all these little things and, and you find out. But I think I think the happiest thing for me when I was doing it, because I really didn't know, I knew enough about coaching, but I didn't know that 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 I would I would find that the self esteem building is part of coaching. You know, mm-hmm. I always thought, oh, that's going to be in the in the therapy range or something. So, how do you see that as how as the importance in terms of coaching? How important is that self esteem piece, and how how does it work that that coaches work with people that way? Well, first, let me say that, and it's, I'm glad you asked me that because when I first started as a coach, I started out as a relationship coach. I got a, ma- a master relationship certification, and it did not matter what the issue was. When I was coaching someone, it always came back to the person's self esteem. Mm-hmm. Even when I went into life coaching, it always the issue with them moving forward always came back to the person's self-esteem. They always had some kind of limiting belief that they were sometimes aware of, but most of the time not aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, So the self-esteem piece is big in, I believe, in all forms of coaching. And I'm talking about business as well. You'll find if you're a business coach that you'll deal with people who can't uh, progress because they're dealing with some self-esteem issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. So self-esteem, you know, self-esteem itself, it, it, it means to estimate yourself, right. And how you actually estimate yourself. So, you know, you begin to, what people don't realize is that all their lives, what they do is they are estimating themselves. And not only are they estimating themselves, they are, um, repeating affirmations to themselves. Where they are in their life right now is because of the affirmation that they have told to themselves over and over again, not realizing that it's an actual affirmation. Mm -hmm. You understand? So whether it's Mm -hmm. negative or positive, where you are right now is because of the affirmations that you have told to yourself or maybe other people have told to you. Yeah. You know, and and that is what affects your self-esteem and it it affects who you are. And, And of course, you know, I coming coming from my angle where I do that the bullying thing as well um you know I deal with a lot of self-esteem people and of course I you know you know that's where I feel like I've got I've got that niche because I I went through my own whole world of that realizing Mm -hmm. that 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 importance of trusting yourself you know when you talk about relationships you know, I always think of trust, you know, the first the first thing that tends to break down is trust, right? You don't something for some reason you don't trust. 
but trust is really internal. Like, you know, one of the things I tell people, we, we, no one can mind read. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't mind read the other person. So, so you start making assumptions, you know, you start trying, thinking they're thinking a certain way and it's, a, it's really in you, you're thinking that way. Right. Right. And, and it's that self-esteem, like, you, you know, not to get into sort of the, the, the idea of relationships, but, you know, when someone's being abused at, in a relationship and then they don't do anything about it, it's like, well, what, what is your self-esteem? What are, where, where are you? You know, where where do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who's, you know, are you comfortable with, you know, this person abusing you? Or right. do you want to be someone who takes charge of their life? Right. You exactly. Know? And I think that's a good breaking point. I, I don't know if you wanted to add to that. I'm sorry. I, I, I should have let you uh, add no. to that. Um, but I thought just need to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'd like to go a little deeper into sort of maybe the causes and then the solutions. How, how do we get out of that and move forward into what is, you know, the, the end result of coaching, which is goal, that goal that, that you ultimately want to meet. So we'll be awesome. right back uh, with a- Aisha Amatula uh, here on Healthy You. You're listening to Healthy University, with Alan Eisenberg. Bullying is in the headlines every day. Now, there's a website to provide you information, blogs, podcasts, research, and links to learn more about how bullying can have long-term effects to the survivors and the bullies. Visit bullyingrecovery.org and learn more about how you can help yourself and others. Book our team for your anti-bullying events. Everyone deserves to live the life they want and overcome the past. Bullyingrecovery.org, helping people learn to thrive after bullying trauma. Hi, and welcome back to Healthy You. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I'm here with Aisha Amatula, who is the director of the Universal Coach Institute School of Coaching, and who taught me everything about my world of coaching that I do now. And we're talking about really the sort of beginning part of getting someone ready for coaching. That's kind of how I think of it, which is getting their their self-esteem built back up so they're ready to say, I can go forward and get to a goal. But what, you know, going back to sort of the part that we have to start at, what do you, what do you, what have you seen or think, you know, the, 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 the things that are causing people to, to develop that lack of self-esteem? Because I think we're all born, you know, we're all born sort of, it, it, it's a learned trait. It's not something mm-hmm. that, that people have. So, so what is it that, that stops them from moving forward? Is a tragedy in their past or something you find on a personality side? What what have you discovered? Most of the time, it's always something with the past, whether it's, um, you know, far in the past or even most in the recent past. Um, a lot of times it has to do with their childhood. And when I say their childhood, that can be, you know, maybe, maybe negligent parents. That can be from their peers. Uh, bullying is a really big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, whew, trauma, uh, relationships. A lot of times what I found, though, is that it always had to do with um, someone else, mm-hmm. you know, what someone else did to them or said to them or how someone else made them feel. Um, or they could be judging themselves against other people. Yeah, I, I also find sometimes, you know, and I, and I know I had this and it, it was probably a trait that I was born with. I, I don't know. It's an interesting one. You know, the perfectionist mentality, the idea yes. that that you you have to be perfect, right? That there's that there's a goal. You know, going back to our idea of coaching, right? Coaching for a goal. Um, that there's a goal toward perfection, and mm-hmm. you can you can a- attain it. Have you, have you run into that? 
Yes. And but also when I do run into that uh, most of the time, it has to do again with their child, <laughs> with yeah. their childhood. You know, um, how did they grow? How they grew up? You know, either they were they were looked at as having to be the perfect person or the perfect child or they weren't you know, the perfect person and the perfect child. And now they feel like they have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. So, yes. Yeah. And it's funny. I I just had talked to a person who deals with athletes and and I I thought it was a good tie to to that kind of idea that, you know, obviously athletes are always dreaming to perfection, right? They want to play in the pros or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But but that idea, what I I always talk about, and I'm, I'm interested in your perspective on this, um, is that when you set a goal, you have to be careful not to overset your goal. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is like, I, when I was trying to get healthier and I started going to the gym, I said, you know what? I want to, I want to run in a race, right? I want to run in a 5k, which is 3.2 miles, right? <laughs> okay. And, and so I'm going to condition myself. I'm going to, you know, start trying to, to condition, condition myself. But I feel like the one thing I learned is that if I had added another variable to that goal, I, I, I had the potential for a big failure, both mentally and well, really mentally, which was if I had said, I want to run a 5k race and I want to run it in this time, mm-hmm. you know, in 20 minutes, let's say versus the 30, I ran it in or whatever. Okay. Um, that that would have, if I didn't do that, that would have led to disappointment, which would have possibly cascaded to self-esteem and not going to the gym anymore because I, I couldn't have been successful because I didn't, you know, I, I'll have, I'd have to work out much harder and I felt like I worked out as hard as I could. And you see, like that snowball effect. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do, do, do you agree or disagree? Like, Ultimately, a goal should be achievable. Like you should know, I almost feel like people should know ahead of time, hey, I can achieve this goal, right? And that's where that self-esteem kind of gets in the way, where if they're not in a, a good mindset, then they could they could start to defeat themselves in trying to goal set. Do you think that's true? Right. Um, okay, so I believe that all goals should be measurable, and when you're dealing with, first of all, that's why it's always great to ha- do a self-assessment or have your client do a self-assessment uh, before they come in. And if it is, a, if, if you're dealing or if you are someone who um, n- knows that if you, you know, know that if you don't achieve something that is going to affect your self-esteem, that person, I believe, should begin to create small, smaller goals, smaller action, action steps. Um, one of the things that I always tell my clients is not to focus so much on the goal, to focus more on the action steps, because it's it can be disappointing um, and it can be more challenging when you're trying to meet this specific goal. But when you focus more on the action steps and mm-hmm. you set smaller, um, smaller goals for your action steps, it actually helps boost the self-esteem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because when you see that you're meeting the little, the little, you know, the little goals, the tiny goals, it, it, it motivates you to move forward. So um, I do. I, I mean, I can understand and I do see how that happens. So when stuff like that happens, I recommend always setting smaller goals. Yeah, exactly. So, yes. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you, you, you could build yourself up to say, OK, you know, I can I could run it in this. But, you know the original goal, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I hated working out and I hated doing right. all this. And then, you know, you say, well, I'm going to do it. And you need a motivator and you say, well, my motivator is I'm going to run in this race, but I'm not prepared at that point to add another variable on top exactly. of it. That's going to fail me. Right. You know, so right. it's the small goal was to run the race, run the race. Exactly. Now that I have a time. Okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I have a time point. Right. But the other thing is, you know, the, the other, the other, thing I always think is a setup for failure and again can reduce your self esteem mm-hmm. is not allowing your goal to shift. Like let's say mm-hmm. something happens, like life gets in the way. You know, it's yes. a, my favorite John Lennon quote, you know, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Mm-hmm. And and so sometimes you're, you know, that by doing what you're talking about, right? And that's I was gonna ask you about techniques and you're kind of explaining it. The the technique is really aim for the smaller goal and then reset like at the next meeting with the coach right you're gonna go okay you're here 
do you still want to get here? And are we on the right path? Mm -hmm. Do we need to adjust? You know, uh, because like even the person I was talking to the other day said, I want to do this in two months. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. You know, that's a, that says outstanding way to start. Right. Cause, cause the other thing that I don't know that people always understand is, is coaching is finite, not infinite. You yes. know, as we, we were talking about therapy, you know, we coaches want to see their person re achieve their goal. Yes. And then hopefully if you did a good job, they come back to you. Right. You know, that's a, that's a goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, but the, the goal is, or the coach wants to see you achieve and, mm -hmm. and get there. So, um, what other, I mean, what other nuggets do you, do you think you might add on the self-esteem issue or just how important that is in the world that, that a person is in, in terms of, you know, is some of it also like a reality check for people? Like, are you really where you want to be? Are you really doing the things you want to do? Or, you know, are you willing to, to I mean, it's kind of like what we were talking about, you know, pe people sometimes have to make life shifts. Right. Exactly. Right? Yes. So. I, I believe a lot of times, even with goal setting, because one of the things that I do see that happens a lot um, when I'm working with people, sometimes uh, they their their goals change, you know, things that they want to do change. And a lot of, um, when this happens, also, this has to do with the pe a person not really being aware um, of what it is that they really want or who it is that they are or where they want to go. Um, one of the things that you said was uh, when we we have to be prepared for, you know, to make a shift. Um, so when you are working on your goals or even in yourself with your self-esteem or with anything, uh, we always have to try to. We can't like figure out everything, but we need to just kind of try to look at what challenges might actually, you know, get in the way of us mm -hmm. accomplishing our goal or even even what challenges might get in the way of building our self-esteem, you know, whether it's other people around you, uh, whether it's your own negative um, self-talk, you know, and, and develop ways and tools and techniques to help us to deal with these challenges, to help us to be prepared, you know, for the things that might get in the way of us um, boosting our self-esteem or, or, you know, creating goals and to move forward. And I totally forgot what you asked me, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, I think it was really what other nuggets and you're, you're giving them, but, but it's that, you know, I think, I think it's that idea. Yeah. I just, I just place so much importance on the belief in self and, and really, you know, I tell people, I say, you know, you, you truly, there's, there's only one person in the world that is guaranteed to love you 365 days a year, seven days a week, your whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's you. <laughs> yeah. If you don't start there, you know, if we, if we, if you can't get to there, you know, so taking, even taking yourself out on a date, I mean, do you even like to be around yourself? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I tell people that I'm like, you know, there was a long, I spent many, many years not feeling that way. Okay. And depending on others acceptance of me you know mm -hmm. and and wanting their approval and and being a people pleaser which right. you know it's not terrible to be a people pleaser but at the same time you owe yourself the same thing right you know and and so i i i kind of explain that whole idea that you can't have your self-esteem be based on what's someone else exactly. someone else's reaction it's got to be your reaction yes you're and, you can... go ahead so, so I was going to say self-esteem, really, the, the beginning of it, of, of really working with your self-esteem is going to be having to dig into your beliefs. You know, what is it that you really believe about yourself? That's first and foremost. We need to find out what are those limiting beliefs that you have mm -hmm. um, about yourself? Where did these beliefs come from? Because that's really important. We, we need to discover where did these beliefs come from? How did you, you know, did someone tell you this? Did, you know, is it some, something you came up with on your own? Or was it something that you've seen? And then we have to begin to for, figure out what is it that you really want to believe, yeah. you know, and then reprogram those beliefs. Like that's where it starts from. It starts from what you actually believe, where did it come from, and what do you want to believe? People have to understand that beliefs can be changed. And that's something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding. Right. And, and I think that's the key. It's, it's, 
you know, you, you, you get into a mindset and so, and a lot of times, you know, these things are passed down generationally. Mm -hmm. It's like someone has told you this and you are a hundred percent bought into it and you don't see the forest through the trees that, you know, there's people who don't believe what, what you're saying or what, what you, you know, that you can't be successful, you can't be these things. Yes. And I think it's also how you measure success. I I like to use my, my older son as an example who, you know, wasn't meant for college, tried college, didn't work out. He's this incredible person, really, personality wise. People have always just, mo- you know, come to him. Like if he wanted to, he could make a lot of money probably in sales, but that's mm-hmm. not for him. But but he has that personality. You know, people want to be around him. And he was doing this phone answering thing for me for a couple of years, which I knew he would make him miserable. Um, and then one day he just said, you know, I'm going to spend my own money and I'm going to become an EMT and work with people, you know, make people better. That's what I want to do. Right. And, you know, he did it himself. You know, it wasn't like mom and dad, give me money or I don't know how I'm going to do this and and work at the same time. He just did it. Right. It was something he wanted to do. (laughs) And he goes, you know, he goes for his first Pract, what's called a, his practicum, right? He goes to a hospital because mm-hmm. I didn't even know this. I was all worried because I, I, every time I hear EMT, I think firehouse, and those are hard jobs to get. Right? No, e- EMTs are in the emergency room in the hospitals. They're mm-hmm. they're the people who are actually doing a lot of work. So he goes to his first hospital, and and as he's leaving from this, you know, little practicum he did, they said, "Hey, as soon as you pass that EMT exam, you have a job." <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and that was it. it. And and I just said, you know, that's because one, he's passionate and two, he's got great self-esteem like he mm-hmm. really does. And those are the two things combined with that. You can do anything, I think. That's right. I, mean, I, that's I believe right. that passion and self-esteem. Yep. I love that. Yeah. And it's, I, you know, I, I, I think he's a testament and, and, it, and it's, you know, the, the job doesn't pay as well as it paid before. But I tell you what, he's he's happy. He works 12-hour shifts, you know, and he, he's more energized probably at the end of the 12-hour shift than he is tired because he's done the things that he loves to do. Right, exactly. And doing what you love to do, doing following your passion boosts your self-esteem as well. Right. And, yeah. and, I, and I think that, you know, people a lot of times, yeah, I've, I've met a lot of people who went to law school and then realized <laughs> that practicing law was not what they thought it was going to be. It's yeah. not like on TV. Yeah. And so they, they ended up, you know, working with me and I'm like, you know, it's, it's just funny because, you know, they, they, they followed a passion path. So, mm-hmm. so anyway, just coming, coming down from the subject a little bit, um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just curious, uh, what do you, what do you see the future of coaching becoming? I, I, you know, I think it's catching on. I see a lot more articles being written. Yes. Um, so what do you think it, it's going to become and how do you see that expanding your universe of Universal Coach Institute? Uh, well, I believe coaching, like you said, number one, it is definitely growing. It is one of the fastest growing industries um, after the IT industry. Uh, and what people, because what people are finding out is, is that they are going through therapy and they're not really um, moving forward so much so that I have therapists who actually take coaching programs mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that they can, you know, begin to help their clients actually move forward and set goals and use other tools and techniques uh, to help them get to where it is that they want to be. Uh, when you are, when you're with a coach, I mean, not a coach, when you're with a therapist and and you're not moving forward. The therapist is almost like an enabler. <laughs> like sometimes, yeah. you know, like depending. Oh, on, it's true. <laughs> you know, so um, people want to be successful, you know, with whatever successful success means to them. People want to be successful. Um, the, the new the new generation, you know, the, the millennials, you know, they mm-hmm. want to be successful. They don't want to sit around and watch everyone else be successful. They want to do what everyone else is out there doing. Right. And so whether it's life coaching or business coaching, people are seeking the help. I -hmm. believe that coaching is going to be, um, it's going to trump therapy at, at at all times. There was one, I actually, um, I'll tell you a a little secret. (laughs) (laughs) I, um, I, was I was in a relationship coaching. I was doing some relationship coaching, not me, but I was actually the actual client. 
And um, there was a part of the coaching where I felt, not I felt, well, the coach, you know, we were talking and it was like, okay, I think you may, might need to see a counselor, you know, about this specific situation. So I went to a therapist, well, I called the therapist anyway, mm-hmm. and everything that they were saying to me was more coaching. You know, mm-hmm. it was more on the coaching side. It wasn't even really therapy. You know, and so I was like, wow, this is interesting, you know, and and, and I asked her, you know, I asked her, you know, well, where does the, you know, when does the therapy, when when does the therapy start? (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) I wanted therapy, you know, because I've never (laughs) actually been in, you all, I have years ago, I've been in therapy. Um, But I wanted therapy and she was doing more coaching than therapy. You know, and so and it was great, you know, because it did help me to move forward in certain things. But um, coaching is really picking up even in the even in the um, mental health world as well. Well, and I I think it is part of it. And, and, you know, I had the same experience like, you know, I I, I tell people, yeah, there was a point where I went to a therapist and and needed to get past my past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People who listen to me know about the bullying stuff that, that I went through that really did a job on myself esteem or my authentic self Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, brought it back. And then at one point I was sitting there and I was, you know, such a studious person anyway. And so fascinated by psychology, as we were talking about Mm -hmm. that, I I actually said, Hey, didn't you just read this article in this amazing thing and, and that this is going on? And he's like, no, I don't know anything about that. And I said, okay, so now I'm I'm coaching the therapist. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm giving him information. I said, it's time for me to stop doing this and, and move on to do something else. And yeah. he, he, he agreed fully. He's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> go ahead. Come yeah, back if you need me again. But yeah, that's funny. There's even, you know, there's therapy, uh, not therapy. There are um, counseling, different counseling methods that use coaching, you know. Yeah, yeah um, definitely. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, think, that's actually what I'm trying to get into the school system is, you know, all these people have studied counseling mm-hmm. and they're not actually doing it, unfortunately, or social work. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, in the school system, they've got them doing 20,000 other things mm-hmm. and they're missing. You know, I, th- I think they're missing the what's going on with kids. And I don't think that there's an age point where someone shouldn't be coached properly or counseled right. properly. And in fact, I think the earlier they get it, the better chance they're not going to be going to a therapist or doing right, those things. Exactly. So, so I'm really big on that. But the other thing is I think that people have understood now, and I see a lot of wellness centers opening mm-hmm. up. And, you know, where there's, you know, yoga, meditation, mindful activity. And I throw coaching right in there. I say, yes. you know, that's, you know, if you went to a wellness center, coaching is part of getting well, yes. you know, making your life more well, more better. And so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see that that whole industry pick up. And, and uh, you know, I actually envision myself sort of with all those people that I've already connected to and yes. being part of that. You know, they went and they did yoga and then they come see me and then they go meditate and, you know, all of these things. And it all combines for them to live a happier and healthier life. Yes. Way. And that's what people want. Yeah. yeah. That's where that's what people want. They want that. They want to be happy. They want to be happier. Right. And and that's the thing. It's like you were saying, you know, you you have to get to the root of what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be the things you think. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not going to be money. I think that's been proven time and again. You know, money doesn't make anybody happy. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Being CEO of a company doesn't necessarily make somebody happy. It doesn't make most CEOs happy. (laughs) As, As we know. So, so. We're coming to the end. I have a couple of last questions. One I always ask everybody, and you're you're not going to be immune from it, um, which is if you could go back and tell your younger self something, Ooh. when would that be and what would it be? Oh, <laughs> yeah, tricky, tricky. <laughs> if I can go back and tell my younger self something. That you what, now know, you know. that. It, what would it be? Um... Well, I guess it would be my high school. Okay, no, I'm going to I'm going to go back even further and and I think this is important especially because you deal with bullying. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to go back to elementary school. I was a bully. 
<laughs> oh, you were. We got to stop this now. Then. No. <laughs> I was a bully in elementary school. I was a bully from elementary all the way through high school. And what I would tell my younger self is that that is just not cool. That's not, you know, that's not the way to go. You know, you and I would ask my younger self, why am I doing it? Mm-hmm. You know, and and if I could really understand why I was doing it, which I know now, you know, why I was doing it and it had to do with my own issues, my own confidence, my own oh, yeah. self-esteem, you know, so. Um, and was it from home? Was it from outside of the school that you dealt with? You dealt with that? No, it wasn't from home. It was just, um, just it was just internal. scared. Yeah, yeah, it had not. I don't believe it had anything to do with uh, my home. OK, well, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it probably did a little bit. You know, I believe that I grew up in a in a in a pretty stable home. Um, mm-hmm. but, you know, I, I had really sh- overly strict parents <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. you know, so I, yeah, that it kind of led that kind of led to it, among other things, such as, you know, my peers and the people I, I was around, you know, and stuff like that. So I would definitely tell my younger self, I would ask my younger self, why am I doing it? And, and try to figure it out and just stop it. <laughs> just stop. Wow. Yeah. Well, that th- thank was- you for sharing that. I mean, yeah, and, and it is. Yeah, it affects. Yeah, I tell people, you know, the, the most. Like yeah. I, have, I have, Alan. Let me tell you, I have people who, um, it's not a lot. Maybe about two or three people who you, I friend requested on Facebook, and they yeah. will not talk to me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm 36 years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 you know it, it's really one of those things. It's you know, and I I talk about it. I said, you know, I'm not I'm not just a bullying recovery activist for people who were bullied, but the bullies too. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, there, if, if, if you put up a chart and you said personality traits of kids that are bullied and, and kids that are bullies, they're very close. Mm-hmm. And not only that, when you're talking about percentages of 85% of kids say they're, they're bullied, mm-hmm. well, that doesn't mean there's only 15% of kids that are bullies. I mean, hurt people, hurt people. Mm-hmm. That's what I always tell. That's what I always tell people. I'm like, I did my fair share, too. I mean, I have stories, too. It's not like, hey, I was bullied and I never did anything bad to anyone. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, you know, I when I had my opportunity I, uh, in a different situation, yeah, I did things. But, you know, the guilt, and I'm sure that's what you're talking about, too, is that, right. mm-hmm. you know, you're you're empathetic enough to realize you, you feel guilt over it. Versus I do. You, you I can do. imagine people who don't. But Especially I always say, you know, being an adult and yeah. people are still mad at you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and, and, you know, I always tell people, I say, you know, you have to just, uh, you, you know, whether you're the victim, you know, I've been lucky to get to talk to some of my past bullies, but of course, of course when I do, they go, I don't remember that because mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it wasn't important to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't the thing that affected them emotionally. Right. And, exactly. and so, you know, you know, you've touched these couple of people this mm-hmm. way that they still feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, you know, you, you let forgiveness come from within. It's, exactly. it's another one of those things for your self-esteem. You know, if you, if, if you constantly let that, that guilt and, mm-hmm. and okay, well, you know, I've got, you know, 500 and something friends on Facebook, but two people won't friend me. Right. Uh, <laughs> you it, know what it, I mean? It's like, it was just a shocker. Like, wow, I can't yeah. believe people are really so mad. You know, yeah. it was just one of those things, you know, it was like a caught off guard. Like, really? You still mad yeah. about that? Well, I actually had to call, like, I, you know, I had written all my stories down. I wrote a book, mm-hmm. and one of my stories was about the time in religious school there was a kid that, that I was able to bully because, you know, I was I was popular at, at religious school but not popular at school. So right. I had this dichotomy going on, and, and we did this thing to this one kid, and it's like the one story that everyone found who was a friend of this kid was that one on my website. <laughs> And so I got like, no, you know, I got all of a sudden I got all this hate mail. <laughs> well, you were such a bully. And they didn't read any of my other stories. Just wow. this one about how I bullied this kid. And I tell you, I felt terrible. I was like, and I called him and he was so happy to hear from me. And it was so cool. And we, we've seen each other twice now, you know, in, in that time. But but it's like, yeah, it doesn't it's not black and white. Nothing's black and white. Right. And, and, you know, I, I've been lucky to have that happen. But at the same time, I've forgiven everybody that I know I'll never get to forgive or see or. Right. Forget, right. You know? 
and 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 you have to realize those two people are still suffering exactly you know, that, that's what that's, that was i think thing. that was the biggest thing for me was like yeah. i wonder what that person actually went through or is going through because of what you know i've done for you to still be upset i i feel like there has to be something that this person has went through or is going through now and yeah. so i think you know you're right you, you can't beat yourself up about it well, and, and you can, you know, if you, if you make the attempt, you know, the attempt is what's important at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're lucky to have Facebook where we can do that. I, I have been able to connect with people that I never thought I'd ever talk to again, you know, and, 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 you, you know, 10 years ago, we wouldn't even thought that possible 20 years ago. You know, people don't realize how exactly. amazing the world is today that I have kids from elementary school that I still that I see on Facebook yeah they're all grown up with kids going to college now and now we're gonna we're gonna end up seeing you know, we're gonna end up seeing everybody's life go through to where, where I'm sure you've experienced it I I've already experienced a few deaths you know where mm-hmm. the, their life ends and their page becomes a tribute page you know mm-hmm. and, and it's weird it's it's strange but that's that's where we are right. anyway Thank you so much for sharing that because I think I think it's so important. You're the first person who's ever said, you know, this was the side I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and thank you for for sharing on about bullying because oh, you're you know, again, I, I don't. It's not a black and white issue, and 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 I think it's great that people can hear. Hey, you know, this bothers me. I wish I didn't do it. And right. mm-hmm. if I could go back and tell myself, it's like, don't do it. <laughs> don't, right. don't. But but we all make our mistakes, and that's that's life. And and the best we can do is 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 let the past live in the past, and yes. and become a better person. Yes. So Thank so you. with that in mind, and with with all that we've talked about, you've been a great guest, and I want to give you an opportunity for people to be able to reach out and get in contact with you, and maybe if they want to be a coach. You know, how, how can they reach you and, and then how, how, how can they do um, find out more about Universal Coaching Institute? Sure. Well, they can. Well, there's two ways. Um, me personally, you can go to uh, coach Aisha, A-Y-I-S-H-A dot com and uh, reach me there um, to become a coach. You can go to Universal Coach Institute dot com or short a shorter way to get there would be coach trainer dot org um, if you want to become a coach. Wonderful. And then I know you have uh, uh, Facebook and all that. And, and as I always oh, yeah, do, yeah, yeah on, my, <laughs> on my on my page. Well, go ahead. Tell people how that. But but I'll, I'll share it on my page as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so on Facebook, it's just facebook.com forward slash uh, coach Aisha, A-Y-I-S-H-A. Yeah, so that's another way to reach out to me. It's probably the quickest way to reach out to me. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and a lot of people put really good stuff up there, you know, who, who know you and who have been part of the, the world you're in. And yeah. so it's it's great. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on the show, Coach, coach Aisha. I, I had so much fun talking to you, and, and thank you for Thank you for really, having me. Yeah, th- thanks for the conversation. It was, I think, it was eye-opening for me. I mean, I, I don't know if you felt like this was different than what you usually experience, but I felt like we got to talk about something that was, you know, both yeah, your interest no, and my interest. It. it was fun. Definitely was different Great. for me. I talk more about business these days. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it's kind of fun to, you know, be introspective or also share, I think, for, for my audience who's always looking for sort of the healthy you thing, you know, I, I I try to live by that. It's like you, you know, how to make a healthier you. Yeah. And it's also healthy university. It's two things, you know, it's like this idea of, like I said, the wellness center. Um, so thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And, and I, I look forward to, uh, continuing our conversations either on the air or off the air, um, in the future. So thanks so much. Thank you so much. And this is your host, Alan Eisenberg. And join us again for another episode of healthy you, Uh, later. Thank you for listening to Healthy University, brought to you by Bullying Recovery, LLC. This podcast does not replace the need for medical advice, professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or any other individual. The information provided here or through linkages to other sites is not a substitute for medical or professional care, and you should not use the information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other health care provider. 
Join us next time for more Healthy University.